So the next examples that we have are involving unknown constants. So the previous graph sketches that we have done have just been like literally sketch the graph. They all had numbers in the equations. But this time there are going to be some unknown constants in the equations. So you can see this first, um, sorry, in the same diagram it says sketch the curves with these equations. The first one says y equals x squared brackets 3x minus a. So we've suddenly got this unknown thing in here where we've got this minus a. And then our second graph, which I'm going to do in red, it says that y equals b over x. It's not telling us what the numbers actually are here, but it does tell us something about these numbers, and it does tell us that a and b are positive constants. So we know that they are positive numbers that we are dealing with. It then says state, giving a reason, the number of real solutions to the equation x squared 3x minus a minus b over x equals zero. So really, obviously, we can see that this equation here is, is the solution to the simultaneous equation. Because if I put this minus b over x onto the other side, I've just got the two graphs being equal to each other. So our plan here is to sketch them and find out how many times they cross over. They may have presented this to you in a different way. They may have said, how many solutions are there to x cubed 3x minus a minus b equals 0? What have they done in this version that I've written in red? They've times it by x. So if they gave you and said, how many solutions are there to this? You would need to look back at the two equations they've given you and be like, OK, they're almost the same. They've just been multiplied by x. So what you could do is divide them by x and manipulate it a little bit as well. OK, so we're going to just go straight in with thinking about how these sketches are going to look of these graphs. And I've got the blue one here. Is the blue one a cubic, a quadratic? What is it? It's a positive cubic. And the roots for this cubic, what are the roots going to be? So one of the roots is repeated at 0. What's the other root going to be? Good, a over 3. The other root is going to be a over 3. Now, we know that a is a positive number, so I know that a over 3 is over here. I don't care if it's here, 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 or even over here, because we don't know what the scale looks like. All we know is that it's a positive number, so it will be on the positive side. So there's going to be a repeated root at 0, and there's going to be another root at a over 3. And it's a positive cubic. So I'm going to go in like this, and I'm going to draw my repeated root and my line like that. I wasn't so happy with that end bit. Like this. And you should label that as x squared 3x minus a. So what if you don't label it? Uh, it's not the end of the world, but you should really. Otherwise, they don't know which graph is which. And then my second graph is y equals b over x. So it's a reciprocal graph. Is it going to be a reciprocal graph with, in these two quadrants here, or is it going to be the second option of the, these quadrants here? The first option or the second? It's the first because, because it's positive, because they tell you that b is a positive number. So you're just going to draw one of those and one of those. But how do you know it's done? Because the graph is y equals b over x you know that reciprocal graphs are like that when it's a positive number on the top and like that when it's a negative number on the top. But they've told you that B is a positive number. So I know it looks like this. The, I know it looks like the first one. So it's just B over X. And so it's not positive. Yep. So, so is there like a indices in here? No, that's a comma. That's a comma in the, that says it's like a comma after the thing. It's like a, in the, the sentence. Yeah. And so now that we've got it written like this, we can go to our equation, which is x squared 3x minus a equals b over x. So the solutions correspond to where the graphs, the curves intersect. The sketch shows there will be how many real solutions? Two. Two real solutions. Because there's a solution here and a solution here. So 
So there's two real solutions for this. Can you tell me a bit about these solutions? Tell me anything that you might know about these solutions by looking at the graph. Pardon? One of, one of them is positive for x, this one over here, and one of them is negative. Can you tell me anything about the positive root? Anything more about the positive root? Good. The positive root is also bigger than a over 3. This is x equals a over 3. Clearly, this one is going to be bigger than a over 3. They're not asking you that, but it's just interesting to think about what the graph is telling us. We've got this negative root that's over here because x is in the negative area to give you this one. The, the x solution is smaller than 0. The x solution is negative. I like that that you also said, my name, that the, this positive solution is also bigger than a over 3 because we can see from the graph this solution is to the right of the point where it intersects. Okay, we're going to do one more of these examples and then you're going to have a bit of a, a practice on a few of these questions as well. And you'll do some of them on the boards and then we'll do some at home. Can I go on to the next ones? Yep. Okay, so this time it says on the same diagram, sketch the curves with equations y equals x brackets x minus 4 and y equals x brackets x minus 2 squared. So this one doesn't have any unknowns, but it's just going to be slightly different that we've got here. So I'm going to sketch my coordinate axes like this. And I'm going to do my first graph, which is this one in blue. Tell me about that first graph. It's a, uh, yeah. it's a quadratic crossing at uh, zero, and four. zero and four. No. no, four, zero and four. So my quadratic is going to be like that kind of shape. So that's zero and four. Mm, you don't really. You just know about like the shape of it's roughly like that. Would, were you meaning about like whether it should be steeper or shallower? You'll you'll know when I do the next diagram, and I think it's going to answer Andrew's question from earlier as well. Okay. So then the next graph that we're going to draw, which I'm going to do in red, is x brackets x minus two squared. What does x brackets x minus two squared? Tell me some things about that one. It's a cubic. Good, it's repeated at 2 and, and, zero. and 0, and it's a positive cubic. Now, cubics and quadratics, which ones do you think are going to have the steeper branches? Cubics. cubics. So cubics are going to have steeper branches. Cubics have steeper branches than quadratics. So when I draw a cubic, and it's going to cross at 0, and it's going to repeat at 2. So it's going to have to be steeper, like this. So I know, and I think this was kind of Andrew's question, he was saying, like, how do I know if they're going to cross when they kind of go off the board here? So I could have, and this is going to be an incorrect drawing for a cubic, I could have drawn my cubic like this. I could have crossed it at 0. And I could have said that it's going to go like that. But this is badly drawn because. There's three, there's two intersections. Yeah, but I, there could be two intersections. But the reason that there won't be is because cubics have steeper branches than quadratics. You can clearly see here this cubic branch is not steep enough because we know that cubics are going to be steeper than quadratics. There are some times where they might cross over. But if they've both just got an x squared or an x cubed, if we've got nothing else to affect that, then we think that this graph is going to have to be steeper branches. So it's going to look more like that. And these two branches here aren't going to cross each other because of the fact that the cubic is going to be steeper than the quadratic. And quartics will be steeper than cubics. You just have to be careful because um, if you did put like an A value in here, if I did put like 100 in front of this one, then it would be probably steeper. But if they've both, this one has just got an x squared, this one is an x cubed, if you just compare those directly, the cubic will be steeper than the quadratic. So that's not an, that's not an always rule, that's just a general most of the time kind of rule. That's a most of the time that's going to happen. Unless there's a 
Unless there's a value in front, in which case, just then it's a bit like murky. Yeah, then it's a bit like, oh, I'm not, I'm not really sure what's going to happen here. Then it says, hence find the coordinates of any points of intersection. So one of the coordinates is definitely going to be 0, 0. We can just see that that's where they're crossing. Now, I don't think that they're going to cross because of this information that we've got here that we've said we think cubics are steeper. But then Ismail also just said, well, you know, what if we didn't know that? We're going to now show how your algebra will show you that they don't cross each other, that there are no more solutions to this. So I'm going to solve these two equations simultaneously. So I'm going to do x, x minus 4 equals x x minus 2 squared, like this. And I'm just going to expand all the brackets and see if I can solve this equation. And then we're going to try and show why this equation does only cross once, and it doesn't cross any more than that. So if I expand the brackets on the left-hand side, I get x squared minus 4x. And if I just expand this x minus 2 squared, what does that expand to, Prof? Um, just expanding x, x minus 2. Minus four Good. Then I'm going to expand the brackets again on the right-hand side. So that's x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x. So why do you do that? Because we're trying to find, we're actually trying to find out the solution. Which I, I know we know that the answer is 0, 0. I'm just wanting to show you with algebra that there are no other solutions. And you're going to see why in a second that there are no other solutions. So I need to make everything equal to 0 here. So I will have x cubed. What should the x squared term be? Plus 4x squared. No, I'm putting everything onto this side. Oh. Minus, minus 5x squared. I've got minus 4x squared minus x squared. And then 8x. So, I want to try and solve this equation. What can I do first of all? Um, Take out the x. I can factor out an x. So I have x, x squared, minus 5x, plus 8 equals 0. So this tells me that either x is equal to 0. Well, we knew that that was a solution, because we have x equals 0, and so y equals 0. That's because this first bit here could be 0. Or we get x squared minus 5x plus 8 equals 0. Now, do we think that this thing is going to have solutions? We can't factorize, we can't factorize it, but it still could solve. Yeah. Okay. Now, this thing here, I don't think that my graph shows it's going to have any solutions because my graph doesn't cross. But I've written down here, hint, remember, you can use the discriminant to reason about the number of solutions of a quadratic. So if I wanted to tell the person reading my work, if I wanted to tell the examiner that a quadratic has got no solutions, I can use the discriminant to tell them that. Can you just remind me about what, what can you tell me about the discriminant if there are no real solutions? What can you tell me about b squared minus 4ac? It would be less than 0. So the discriminant for this thing that we've got here, our b squared minus 4ac, is minus 5 squared which is 25, minus 4 times 1 times 8, 4ac, which is 25 minus 32, which is minus 7. So because b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, there are no solutions, no real solutions. So because b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, there are no solutions. Which means the only solution or the only coordinates are 0, 0. The only coordinates are 0, 0. Pardon? OK, good. The only reason I did this extra bit down in here in blue, because our graph showed us they didn't cross, is because I wanted to remind you, because they love to do this, they might say show or prove that there are no more solutions. You can't just say this doesn't factorize. You can't just say, oh, I put it in my calculator and it didn't come up with any real solutions. You need to use the discriminant to say there are no real solutions. 
So if you ever get that kind of question, make sure you use the discriminant. It's a tool to be able to tell you when there are no solutions, no more real solutions that are there. So we're gonna try some more questions from exercise 4D for about 15 minutes, and then we're gonna do some other questions to move on to the next bits of the chapter as well. Yeah, we're gonna do them on the whiteboards.